Hey everybody, Sean McInnes here, joined by Ryan Geithman from Snowblind, who's here to tell us all about Lord of the Rings War in the North. Ryan, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing good, thank you. So, Ryan, we saw a lot of Lord of the Rings games earlier in the decades, uh, in this decade, when the when the trilogy was coming out in theaters, but it's been a little bit more quiet since then. What's, uh, what's War in the North all about? What makes it different from a lot of those games that came out earlier? What really makes it different is the co-op. Snowblind has always been known for co-op. Pretty much all of our games have been about co-op play, and we still get letters to this day from you know, grandmas that play their, our games with their kids and their grandkids. So this game is about co-op evolved. It's about interdependent co-op. We have uh, three characters in the game, the elf, the dwarf, and the human, and they have to work together to survive. If you don't work together, you'll end up getting killed really quickly. Now, are these characters that um, people are going to recognize from the books, or are they sort of ones that you kind of came up on your own? Uh, well, they'll recognize an elf, dwarf, and a human for sure. They're not, they're not characters from the books. You create them, they're, so they're, they're part of our own game. All right. Now, the world that you guys have set uh, War in the North in is, a, as you were telling me before, it's a very gritty sort of Middle Earth. Why did you make that decision? Uh, to differentiate it a little bit from other Lord of the Rings titles, it's also really cool to be able to take melee combat and do something more interesting with it. So, for example, when you finish somebody off, it's, it's much more interesting to like run a sword through them than just have you know a little spark effect or something. Or when a troll kills you, it's it's interesting and satisfying to have them pick you off the ground and rip your head off, rather than you know just knock you to the ground. So, it's that sort of uh, finishing moves on players that we think is really entertaining. Yeah, I'm definitely interested to see what it, what an M-rated uh, Lord of the Rings game looks like. Now, you were telling me before one of the other big features of this is, uh, is co-op. Can you describe how that whole system works? Uh, the co-op system is based on interdependence, so all the skills in the game are based on interdependent cooperation. So, for example, the human, the lore master, can cast a spell called Sanctuary, which creates this protective shield around them, and the other players can huddle inside of it, and it protects them from ranged attacks. It also gives everybody healing auras or a healing buff. So they're incentivized to stick together, and all the skills in the game, game are set up that way. Now I have to ask, what are the, what's the big advantage of working on a Lord of the Rings game when there's not a movie out there in theaters right now? The big advantage is the, just the canon itself. I mean, it is the, the originator of all fantasy. There is no better world to, to explore this kind of game than that. The, um, everything else is derived from Tolkien's work, so it's, it's really awesome to go to the source where we don't have to make stuff up. We're, we're standing on the shoulder of a genius, which, you know, J.R.R. Tolkien, which, which allows us to focus more on the gameplay and the co-op. Well, Ryan, I'm very intrigued. What you've described sounds very cool. Uh, one last question for you. When is War in the North going to be out in stores, and which platforms will it be out on? It will be out in 2011 on 360, PS3, and PC. There you have it, guys. That does it for your look at War in the North today, but stay tuned for more coverage leading up to that 2011 release date.